What's up, everybody, and welcome to a very special episode of Reviewed. Today, we are so lucky to be checking out a sneak peek of the recently launched Legal Tender Jigsaw Puzzle from King's Wild Project. Now, for anyone who isn't familiar with King's Wild Project, they are a powerhouse in the playing card community, and we are really excited to see them start dabbling in the Jigsaw Puzzle community. Steve, I don't know about you, man, but this is one heck of a puzzle. Dude, I was so surprised when I heard that King's Wild was coming out with a puzzle. I really was too, man, and I love the fact that Jackson Robinson is always looking for ways to bring the King's Wild Project brand to new communities. He is an absolute creative genius, and this puzzle just goes to show that he's really looking for ways to branch out in his creative outlets for the brand as a whole. And man, I think he hit a home run with this one. Yeah, I mean, I was super excited. I'm a lover of puzzles. So to see someone in the playing card world come out with a puzzle, next level. Dude, you know what? I'm so excited for this thing. Let's jump right into it. So before we tell you all the juicy details about this puzzle, we just want to give a big thank you to Jackson Robinson for supplying this puzzle for us to check out and review. We were really excited when Jackson reached out, and I have to say that excitement has carried through throughout the process here because this puzzle is just fun, man. I know you said you're a big Jigsaw puzzle fan, Steve. I am as well. I don't do them as frequently, but I'm very much a traditionalist. I'll go on Amazon. I'll find a puzzle of a picture that, you know, inspires me to pick it up, and then I'll kind of dabble at it over the course of a couple days nothing too competitive or aggressive but looking at this puzzle i have to say man i don't know if i'd be able to stop once you started up <laughs> with it so checking out the puzzle this is a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle it's actually double sided so you're getting two puzzles in one one of the really cool features of this puzzle is that it has foil printing on the main side of the puzzle which just absolutely looks beautiful for anyone in the playing card community this is actually printed by expert playing cards so you're going to know that name immediately for anyone in the puzzle world who isn't familiar with expert playing card company they are one of the great go-to printers in the playing card community so their quality is always top notch and jackson has had a long-term relationship with them so no surprise that this puzzle is top quality as well measuring at 24 by 18 inches this is a relatively smaller size thousand piece puzzle but if anything that almost makes it more challenging because the pieces come in a little bit smaller than what you'd expect on a standard size thousand piece puzzle i actually really like that aspect of it though because you actually need less counter space to be able to put this thing together yeah normally i i do it on my dining room table you know because it has a lot of terrain that i can kind of stretch out uh, you know, but I was able to do it on my coffee table in front of the TV, Dude, which is great. So, uh, you know, that was good. Definitely helps you. <laughs> definitely helps you keep it a little bit motivated when you get some background noise going with the puzzle. But this thing with all of the foil and all the beauty to it is really just going to keep you enthralled as you go through it. One of the really cool things about this puzzle, too, is the fact that it's actually a puzzle of playing cards. And I love to see that mishmash of puzzles and playing cards in one medium there, which I think Jackson really just did a spectacular job. Yeah, dude, and it has to do with money. Which is, you know, <laughs> oh, everybody loves money. So that's that's a no brainer there. Yeah, for those that don't know, you know, Jackson came out with a deck of playing cards in the past that was based on United States currency. And this puzzle actually pays homage to that deck of cards. Yep, the legal tender playing cards, which honestly, Jackson's had great success across many years with currency related decks of cards. And legal tender is just one of the most recent evolutions of that style. So we're really excited to see how this plays out as a puzzle. Now, for everyone out there who's already in love with this puzzle, but just wants to see more, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And hit the bell. So now let's check this thing out, Steve. So as you can see here, we have an amazing time lapse, which thank you to Steve and his <laughs> lovely fiance, Leslie, for taking the time to throw this together so we could see just how easily or not that easily this puzzle goes together. Yeah, dude, I'm going to be honest, you know, uh, normally, like I said, I do things, uh, you know, on my dining room table and I have better lighting, but we, you know, chose this table because it's smaller, but um, dude, this puzzle was so fun to put together, you know, taking it out of the bag 
we're always nervous when we take it out of the bag because there's always like dust particles, yeah. uh, you know, that comes in, comes in bags or, you know, in the plastic bags. But this comes in a nice white kind of uh, canvas bag, which I thought was a really nice uh, addition. Very cool. You know, but there was no dust in the bag, which I was really excited about. That's very cool, man. It's always nice when you don't have to worry about cleanup even before you just start the puzzle. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, like you said before, the, the pieces are a little smaller. So, you know, when we did, uh, you know, pull them out of the bag, we were like, oh, OK, this is going to be a little hotter than normal. You know, we normally take about five, five to six hours to put a thousand piece puzzle together, depending on the style. Um, you know, and, and we were looking forward to hopefully doing it quicker. But, you know, uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> I love the inclusion, though, too, of that standalone little uh, piece of paper that shows the full puzzle there. So you're not carrying around the box for the entire time. Yeah, I mean, the, the one thing I would say, you know, that's a must. You have to have, you know, a little sheet, uh, whether it's a little poster or a little card. This one's nice. It does fit in the nice magnetic book box that uh, the puzzle comes in. Um, I would have liked to have seen it a little bit bigger, uh, you know, just to make it a little bit easier on the eyes. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it definitely was workable for sure. Dude, and that book box that you mentioned too, which I absolutely love, is kind of a different little approach in the puzzle community there because I feel like I'm so used to seeing the top of the box for a puzzle looking like the puzzle and then the back will have some ad copy and some other things on it. But in this scenario, you have a fully custom puzzle box, which actually mimics some of the book boxes that Jackson's done in the past. That magnetic closure, just the quality across the board for this really speaks to the quality of the puzzle itself as well. Yeah, I mean, most puzzles, you know, you might get a wooden puzzle that, that comes in a nice package, you know, but most pu uh, puzzles come in your standard box, really cheap and, uh, you know, lightweight. But this, you know, like you said, this comes in a really nice magnetic thick stock book box that you can put on your bookshelf and you won't even know it's a puzzle. So how did you find the pieces fit together and everything on this? How was the cut of the puzzle itself and the quality of those pieces? I mean, the, the cut was beautiful. The, the cool thing about it, so you said this was double sided. Uh, it was really easy to distinguish which side is which because one side is completely flat and the other side, which has the foil on it, uh, that you see here that we're doing uh, kind of has a little bit of a raise to it. Okay, nice. You know, so it was really easy to distinguish which side is which. It kind of had kind of a, I guess you could say like a glossy feel to the, to this side. Very nice. Yeah. So you know, it was it was pretty easy to figure out what side was what, and uh, you know, obviously pushing out the pieces and and seeing what we have was uh, always fun because you know, right when you open up a puzzle and you know you dive in, it's it's definitely how are you going to sort the pieces, you know? Yeah, and I feel like you took an interesting approach with this as well. Obviously, you always go for the border because it makes life easier there. But seeing this thing come together, dude, there were just a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of cards. And anyone who's seen a deck of playing cards, which I feel like is a lot of people there, you can tell that cards themselves are all very similar visually. So it must have been difficult to put this together in a way, at least in the early stage, where it made sense. Did you try and approach it putting the cards themselves together? Or did you really just go at it you know looking at the image and finding the pieces that fit best yeah i mean i think everybody has their own way of sorting through puzzle pieces when they're you know doing puzzles but um you know the first thing we did was obviously the outside you know we did the the borders and you know we we hoped that we would find all the all the end pieces nice. the outside pieces but you never you never do it for a shot there's always a few kind of hidden in the rest of the pieces, you know. Uh, but, you know, other than that, we kind of spaced it out. We, we took out all the red uh, cards, I guess you can say, the ones that had like diamonds or hearts on it. Uh, we separated those. We separated the, the ones that had, you know, all the black suits, uh, the uh, clubs and the spades. Uh, and then we kind of went with the, the, car, the, the pieces that had shimmer on them. Nice. The nice oil pieces, you know. Uh, which normally on on puzzles you can kind of see different gradients in colors right and the cool thing about this is this uh, also had gradients in the foil you know one side the the foil was kind of green and as you went through the puzzle they kind of got a little more purple and blue and so it was really cool to you know go over that and, and kind of distinguish what goes where so it wasn't literally the same thing you know in a 2d picture it kind of had some depth to it. 
Uh, that's very cool, man. And I definitely think that foil on a puzzle brings such a different level of challenge to it as well because you don't have that fixed color there. So you're maybe looking at the way the photo was taken that shows the completed puzzle, and that foil is not going to look exactly the same. So you almost have to ignore the foil, which is a really interesting approach. Yeah, it's hard to ignore because it's so pretty. It completely understand. <laughs> I'm really excited to see this puzzle go live though. Obviously this is live on Kickstarter right now. You can find the link down in the description below for any of those avid playing card or puzzle fans out there. This is a new challenge that you're really going to enjoy. Not only do you get a thousand piece puzzle with a double sided puzzle actually included on it. So you're getting two puzzles there, but this is a foil puzzle, absolutely breathtaking and ties two real fun hobbies together. And there is only a thousand available, so you don't want to miss out. Dude, absolutely. You know what? That's the one thing I love about Kickstarter. Everyone has an opportunity to get them at the same time, but once they're gone, they're gone. So make sure to check out the link in the description down below. And while you're at it, make sure to like the video, share it with a friend, and subscribe to the channel. See you later.